Hi and welcome to the We Are Zion Sermon Podcast. We are a local church based here in Chennai, India. We are so glad you are with us and hope that this will encourage, inspire and instill fresh faith in you. We begin a new series on the book of Psalms where we look closer at this book and glean from it invaluable treasure. We believe that through this series our worship of God will go deeper and our love for him will grow stronger. We have Gershom share with us today from Psalms 94 and he reminds us that God is really our everything. How ready are you to entrust him with all that you are and have? I thought it's a joy and a privilege uh, that I get to bring God's word to you today. For those of you who are watching us online or for those of you who are probably listening to this, uh, I just want to encourage you and pray and believe with you. that even as we dwell in god's word that you would find comfort peace strength courage and uh, you know we are uh, we as a church have been doing uh, the entire psalms over the last two weeks and uh, we honestly don't know how long uh, god's asking us to uh, go along this path but i believe as we heard jeren speak and i believe as we heard tina speak Uh, and as we dwell this week in the psalms i believe he's doing something in and through us so even before i talk i just want to say a quick word of prayer a loving heavenly father lord i thank you lord for this time thank you lord for being with us thank you lord for the worship thank you lord that we could intercede together and i pray even as we read your word right now that we fall on good soil strengthen us be with us lord right now i pray your words would uh, encourage lord i pray especially lord that the holy spirit would minister through me and it will be your words that i'm saying and i pray that lord it will be you who's moving in and through everyone lord we pray you'd be glorified and honored in your most holy name we pray amen amen so even as we look into god's word today uh, we're going to be dwelling specifically from psalm chapter 94 and even in the last two weeks we saw from psalm 22 where we saw the faithfulness of god And last week we saw from Psalm chapter 16 where God preserves us. He is our inheritance, our counsel, our strength. He in fact is our holiness. We no longer are actually, you know, magnifying our brokenness, but we bring about uh, the wholeness that he brings in and through the work that he does. And we also saw that he is the giver of eternal life. And so even today as we take some time to go through Psalm 94, Psalm 94 in fact has been written and the psalmist in fact is calling out and saying god are you even seeing what's happening here are you even seeing what's happening in the world are you seeing who all are thriving are you seeing who all are actually you know living their life out it's not your children it's not people who follow you but it's rather people who are doing bad you know bad seems to be thriving in this land where are you what are you doing and even today as I start I want us to come to a place to realize we probably are even questioning God today. We're seeing a lot of bad around us. We're probably in the midst of bad things happening right now. I don't know for who this is but I believe even for those of you who are struggling quietly, you probably are getting tormented and you know uh, judged or ridiculed or you know uh, being pushed around by your boss and by your team people and you're asking God, God, aren't you seeing this? Aren't you hearing what they say? and we all have those moments where we feel we are wronged where we feel god you know you're not seeing the plight of the people around there are so many struggling and even if i have to ask you have you sensed inequality in just the society that we are living in today you know uh, there is a lot of things that have come uh, to light which has broken people broken the societies across uh, there are so many lines that have been drawn The pandemic was one such which caused a lot of things to come up. We saw the disparity between those who could afford healthcare for those who were struggling, for those who were unable to even go to the hospital, for those who lost jobs and we saw that, you know, the disparity in it's not just in the socio-economic side, but we see in so many other things. And as I was just preparing, I went through some of the uh, you know, what are some of the disparities that we are seeing, the inequality that we are seeing in our time today in 2023. the biggest surge that we are seeing that we are seeing is the wealthy have become richer the poor have become poorer the second thing that we see is in inequality in human life today we see so many people are dying and the death is 
because of inequality in inequality of probably the in as i mentioned wealth could be of race it could be of the kind of socio economic group because of the upliftment that's on happened and the number that they have given is one person every 4 seconds is dying every day because of inequality the rich poor weak strong it could be between the educated and uneducated inequality because of the amount of even carbon footprint they are saying this was an interesting stat i read which said that you know 20 of the richest billionaires are causing close to 8000 um times more carbon footprint than 1 billion of the poor people the way money is being spent the way we in fact talk about certain issues shows that there's inequality inequality is not by chance but it's a choice it just doesn't happen but it's a choice a lot of us have thought this is my lot this is my thing this is my a uh, thing which i have to deal with and we are struggling with that kind of inequality we see healthcare people are dying because of lack of healthcare close to 5.6 million every year we see 67000 females die every year because of genital mutilation or by killing by their partner or, or spouse we are seeing abuse rise and as i'm reading some of these stats as i was just going through it it it, it broke my heart to see that god we are suffering today and it brought me to this place where a lot of us are questioning our god saying god why are people suffering but it also brought me to this place to realize god if everything was good if everything was good and nothing bad happened the world would not need you we as humans would not need you we would not understand or see the difference we wouldn't have even probably the will power we wouldn't be able to make choices we would be probably like automated robots doing good alone it's because we've had the capacity to think it's because we are created in his image we are able to discern and choose and because of the fall of man because of sin entering we get to choose most of the time the wrong things rather than the right things the bad things rather than the good things the lies rather than the truth and today when we look at god we often times are in this placing i don't you know you know i don't think i can trust a god who's allowing so much bad to happen we have allowed bad choices to reign we have allowed bad choices to rule and going back to 2000 years when jesus walked on this earth there was bad stuff still happening could he have by the flick of his fingers changed the entire outcome he could have but he had god's will and plan he wanted to allow man to experience free will and so even as we go through the psalm today psalm 94 i want to remind you if you are in this place questioning god if you are in this place saying god why is this my lot god why is this happening to me i would say hold on would you read with the psalm with me would you meditate with this because a lot of times we fail to understand god is in this god is in this and so even today as we read we're going to start reading a couple of different portions that are totally five different portions that we're going to read the psalm is broken down that way and i want us to meditate and chew on each and everything and the first thing that i want us to understand is this god listens to our petition my god listens to my petition so today what are your petitions i'm not saying what i what is your list what is your you know the things that you want no but what is your petition what is it that you're asking god could you bring this to pass so that things can change not for me but for my family or not for me for my community not for me but for my city not for me just for my nation what are some of the petitions and this is how the psalmist starts he says in psalm 94 verses 1 to 3 let's read it together the lord is a god who avenges a god who ev- avenges shine forth rise up judge of the earth pay back to the proud what they deserve how long lord will the wicked how long will the wicked be jubilant we see here that his introduction is 
questioning God. God, why are you there? Shouldn't you be doing something? He's shaking up and saying, God, aren't you so great that you, why are you quiet seeing all this? Why are you allowing the proud to just do what they want? Judge them. And so today, I don't know what kind of a place you are in today. I don't know who are the people outside, you know, you who are kind of like dictating and saying, you know what, this is, these are the things that have to be done. Whereas, you know, this is operating in the gray. It's not operating in the white. They are not standing for the truth. They are believing, they are making up lies. And you're probably like going back every day and saying, God, I'm fed up. I can't deal with this. Would you intervene? And there is a way in which God wants us to actually live and do things here. Because many a times when we call on God, it's not him intervening. He intervenes through us. He intervenes through us. He allows us to feel it. He intervenes and he causes us to respond. And so today, what is that response like? In the Passion Translation, the very first verse, it goes on to say, Let your rays of revelation light shine from your people and pierce through the conscience of the wicked and punish them. So which means in the midst of all this inequality and injustice and things not done right, I am supposed to be present there. It requires me to be present so that his revelation light will shine through me. It won't shine off. It will shine through me. Which means I stand there. I allow his light to shine. It requires me to probably keep quiet. But I'm saying, God, shine your light through me. His revelation. So today, I don't know if you're stuck in a place. I'm not. I want to be mindful. Be careful. You're not in a place where you're, you know, giving room for abuse or harm to happen. But in places where you need to stand your ground for your faith, in places where you need to stand your ground for the truth, allow his revelation light to shine. Allow his revelation light to shine. One of the beautiful things that we read from Matthew chapter 5, verse 16 is, let your light shine before men in such a way that they may see your good deeds and moral excellence and recognize and honor and glorify your father who is in heaven. Today, the psalmist calls forth, God, won't you judge? But God saying, would you be my witness where you are? I love this quote by Warren Wiersbe. He says, yes, let God be the judge. Your job today is to be a witness. So today, Wherever you're placed, whatever the cloud looks like, could you stand still and allow his revelation light to shine through you? If you can sense darkness and light, if you can sense the lie from whatever they're seeing, if you can sense the injustice, God's calling us, would you stand there? The psalmist is standing there and asking God, God, won't you stand up? But if it's happening in the midst of him standing right where the confusion is and God saying, I will respond with my shining light. I will respond with my revelation light. And that revelation light that shines through us will be different for different people. For some of us, our quietness would be the way in which God moves and brings about justice. For some of us, it will be in the encouragement. For some of us, it will be in the praying. For some of us, it will be in the step of faith that we take to stand up and speak up. Allow the Holy Spirit to work in and through you. So as we read, God listens to our petitions. So what is your petition today? The second thing that we see in this Psalm 94 is God pleads for our case. Psalm chapter 94, verses 5 to 7, it goes on to say, They pour out arrogant words. All the evildoers are full of boasting. They crush your people, Lord. They oppress your inheritance. They slay the widow and the foreigner. They murder the fatherless. They say the Lord does not see. The God of Jacob takes no notice. One of the beautiful things that we see in the scriptures time and again, God is for 
the oppressed. God is there for those who are slaved. He fights their battles. He wants to set them free. May we never be on the other side. One of the things which becomes evident in the psalm is when the line is drawn, which side of the camp are you at? Are you in the camp which is accusing God or are you in the camp saying and waiting, God, I want you to come and deliver? And if you read in this, there are there is evil that's boasting. Have you noticed when people who commit wrong, they don't, they, they are arrogant. They feel like they can boast about what they're doing. No one in the world dares to question them. We see that they crush people. They oppress people. They take joy in living off the marginalized. And today, even as I'm saying this, I want to draw the line and say, which camp are you in? Because many a times we want to be treated right, but we don't treat others right. Many a times we want good done for us, but we don't do good for others. Many of times we want to be dealt with integrity, but we aren't dealing others with integrity. And oftentimes it's top down. Oftentimes it's people who we can boss over or we lord over or we are masters of that we fail to do right by them. We fail to stand for the truth for them. We fail to be people of integrity for them. And so today, if God's asking you, you've not done right by your maid or by your driver or by your by the pe- team that you're leading or by certain team members you've been biased. If he's convicting you, would you ask for repentance? The cross is right there for us to go and say, God, I'm sorry. I want to change. As Zacchaeus could change. Matthew could change. Tax collectors that we read in the New Testament could change. It's time for us to go back and, you know, ask God, God, please forgive me. For those of us who are probably on the receiving end of this, can we keep our eyes on God? Because God is the one who will plead our case. He is the one who will take it up. He is the one who will stand on our behalf and fight, which requires me many a times to trust him, to trust his timing. And so today, God takes notice of us. There are so many instances where we all have gone through situations like this, where we felt, God, it's so tough for me. How can I even do this? But God gives us the grace. Grace to stand still. Strength to put our hands down so that we don't retaliate. Courage so that we keep our mouth quiet. He gives us fervency so that we wait on him to see him come through in that situation. So today, what is our response going to be? Our response is going to be one of prayer and intercession. Our response is being, God, you can work on the heart of the proud. You can cause them to change. There's a beautiful verse in Proverbs chapter 22 where it says God fights the battles of those who are oppressed, especially those who are widows, those who are fatherless, and those who are poor. And it's a warning for all of us. So let's read that verse in Proverbs chapter 22, verse 22, 23. Do not rob the poor because he is poor and defenseless, nor crush the afflicted by legal proceedings at the gate where the city court is held. For the Lord will plead their case and take the life of those who rob them. Our God is a God who stands for what is right. If we are unjust and not doing right by the people that he's appointed for us and for the teams that we're giving, he will plead their case. So I would ask and urge you, would you take it to God in prayer? For those of you who've done wrong, you can ask him forgiveness and change your course right now. But for those who are waiting, who are saying, God, I've had enough, could you still ask God for strength and grace to hold on? Because he wants us to look to him for strength so that we'll be able to see him plead our case and fight it for us. We'll allow him to do the battle. The third thing, God knows all my plans. Psalm chapter 94 verses 8 to 11 goes on to say, Take notice, you senseless ones among the people, you fools when they become wise. You fools, when will you become wise? 
does he who fashioned the ear not hear does he who formed the eye not see does he who disciplines nations not punish does he who teaches mankind lack knowledge the lord knows all human plans he knows that they are futile the psalmist draws our attention to god and says he is our creator as much as we petition we think many a times we worship a god who cannot see we are worshiping a god who cannot hear we are worshiping a god who doesn't know the plans of the people who are harming us the psalmist is able to say i know that you are my creator he says god you are the one who fashioned the ear so you should be able to hear everything god you are the one who fashioned and shaped our eyes you should be able to see everything but he takes it a step further in verse 11 and says the lord knows all of human's plans he knows that they are futile he knows our intentions he in fact weighs what we've decided to do based on our heart and so today we are living in a world where we can do good but if our heart is not in the right place it's futile what you see transformation happen is because when the heart is at the right place we see things thrive we see things succeed we see things go past generations god is the one who gave ears so he listens to everything not just to select but to everything he hears the whispers he hears what you're talking across on a phone call to someone else about something and about someone else too he is a god who's careful he's listening to every conversation every intention every thing that we are doing the bible says let not your left know what your right is doing many a times he is aware what is the intention what are you trying to do what are you trying to achieve for those of you who think you know what god i'm suffering here are you even seeing god is the one who gave sight and he sees everything he just doesn't see good he sees even the bad he sees the worst and he chooses according to his sovereign will to act if god had to act based on when i wanted him to act the world would be a different place because at the end of it god cannot destroy what he's created as much as he created man he wanted to give man a way out he wanted that relationship to be restored that's why he sacrificed his son jesus and so today even the people who are doing bad he wants them to come to a place to realize it he wants their conscience to awaken the spirit man to awaken to know hey i cannot i can't show difference because this person is of a different skin color or this is because of a different gender or this is because of a different kind of language that they're talking or they're from a different part of the geography space in our country he sees he hears god has punished nations before god knows the thoughts even before they can become plans so today what is our response to this our response is god whatever plans i have made i want to run it by you because you are the god who sees you are the god who hears can you do right can you help me do right today inquire of god and obey what god asks you to do only god can establish and direct us proverbs chapter 16 verses 9 says this a man's mind plans his way as he journeys through life but the lord directs his step and establishes them the lord directs and the lord establishes So for those of you who've been tough on yourself and saying god why is this even happening aren't you even seeing aren't you even listening god probably is asking you your motives aren't right would you get your motives right would you do come to me would you inquire of me so that i can establish it because many a times we feel that you know what if 
if only it could happen right for me but we free come to a place and say god i want to come to the place where you know my plan would you establish this for me which means we walk in obedience to what he's calling us to do he asks us to take a step of faith we take that step of faith he asks us hold back we hold back he asks us to pray we pray he asks us to talk we talk he asks us to dive deeper we dive deeper he asks us to stay still let me work he will work when we stay still the beautiful thing that we see in the old testament ever since god brought israel out of egypt is the fact that whenever he decided to show up in the battlefield he required his people to be still if he had to cause confusion in the camp he wanted his people to stay still so that he could go and do his work so today would you allow god into your plans would you allow god into your plans let him direct it and let him establish it. the next three sections that we're going to see we see the psalmist take a different tone he questions god he asks god he inquires of god he comes to a place knowing who his god is and so today even as i mentioned god is the one who created god is the one who leads us to a place where he'll show us even they are important and he'll allow his light to shine through us because he wants them also to find the truth the real truth and so today as the psalmist takes us on this journey over the next three sections would you open your heart and receive this the fourth thing that we see is god is my safe place psalm 94 verses 12 to 15 blessed is the one you discipline lord the one you teach from your law you grant them relief from days of trouble till a pit is dug for the wicked for the lord will not reject his people he will never forsake his inheritance judgment will again be founded in righteousness and all the upright in heart will follow it the psalmist recalls of the lord and says that his disciples are blessed for those who choose to follow god for those who choose to allow him to be the judge this discipline the lord does he does it in quietness i don't know for how many of you have seen especially in the indian household discipline happens in every place your teacher will discipline you in front of 30 people your principal in front of the whole school your parents sometimes in quietness sometimes in the midst of others but god here disciplines us at a safe place because he doesn't want us to crumble in discipline but rather receive it so that we'll be able to see him more clear what his intentions are what he wants us to do because out of the love that he has for us it says here verse 12 in the passion translation it says Lord yeah there's such a blessing that comes when you teach us your word and your ways even the sting of your correction can be sweet even the sting of your correction can be sweet i don't know how many of you have been disciplined but discipline is painful discipline is us facing the consequences for our choices discipline is where we realize i could have done better discipline is where we've given up self control so that we can be we can our self can be consumed by whatever it is but so today will are we willing to accept god's correction i don't know what he is disciplining you of but it says here the psalmist sums it up and says the lord's judgment is based on righteousness our response is god as you discipline me he wants me to accept the discipline and succeed he doesn't want me to accept the discipline and see defeat rather he wants me to step up ask him for strength to overcome so today what is our response is our response is god would you strengthen our feeble arms and knees so that we can receive your correction so that knowing 
what you require us to do the right way, we'll be able to do it and fulfill what you've called us to do. Oftentimes, our discipline, when we don't receive it, we are doing damage not just to ourselves, but to the people around. So today, I don't know to whom I'm talking, but don't take discipline from the Lord lightly. Treat it. Let the scales fall off our eyes. Let God's discipline direct us to life rather than death, to his love rather than, you know, being damned, to his grace rather than being found guilty. Hebrews 12 talks about discipline in a beautiful way. And I wanted to read those verses. It says, My son, do not make light of the Lord's discipline and do not lose heart when he rebukes you because the Lord disciplines the one he loves and he chastens everyone he accepts as his son. It goes on to say beautifully, the author of Hebrews says that everyone has to undergo discipline and you undergo discipline because you are his son. The minute you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior, you have this bond as a father and son, that kind of relationship, and he corrects us so that we will do what is right. As a parent, I correct my children so that they learn what is right. I would rather discipline them than someone outside disciplining them because I love them, because I care for them, because I want what is good for them. None of the discipline that we receive is pleasant. Even though it is painful, it sets us up for good. So today, when God disciplines us, would you receive his correction? And his discipline happens at a safe place. God's discipline happens at a safe place. What is your safe place today, if I have to ask? It's probably that nook that you have in your house where, you know, you just sit there and you're all by yourself with your thoughts. That becomes your safe place. God will discipline you there. When you open his word, when you read it, he will discipline you. The thoughts, the intentions of your thoughts, the words that have probably come out too fast and have brought about death rather than life. Would you allow his Holy Spirit to work in and through you so that at the safe place that God has, he will be able to correct you and shape you. The fifth thing that we read is, God is my hideout. Psalm 94, verses 16 to 19. Who will rise up for me against the wicked? Who will take a stand for me against evildoers? Unless the Lord had given me help, I would soon have dwelt in the silence of death. When I have said, my foot is slipping, your unfailing love, Lord, supported me. When anxiety was great within me, your consolation brought me joy. The psalmist talks about his protection. And, you know, a hideout is basically like a trench that's dug. You're hiding out there when there's chaos everywhere. And in that imagery, I was able to understand that, you know, when it says here in verse 18 and 19, my foot is slipping. I'm unable to Stand my ground, God. But his love held me. He says, when anxiety was great, God, I was so confused. I couldn't make a decision around. But your consolation brought me joy. Would you trust God that he will be your hideout? That he'll be a place where you can unravel and he will keep you in shape. He'll keep you in form. He won't allow you to go into disrepair. You know, there are so, so many situations in my life when I had to make intentional leadership decisions and de decisions for my own self. It took me to a place of anxiety and frustration and worry. But I thank God that many a times all of that happened under the shelter of the Almighty. It was like a hideout. As I was hiding there, he guarded my heart. As I was guide, hiding there, he guarded my mind. As I was hiding there, he guarded my soul. My soul didn't go downcast. It held, it was strong. When things didn't work around, when I lost things, my spirit didn't give up. 
when things didn't work out my way, my heart didn't lose ground. It happened because I found God to be my hideout. And I believe that's a protection that he gives. For many a times, for those of us in the position of actually giving up, giving up on a spouse, giving up on a friend, giving up on that job because of certain things, would you ask God, God, can you please show yourself so that I'll find you as my hideout? So that everything that he says in 18 and 19, when you're slipping and falling away, he's there to hold you. When you're anxious and struggling, he's there to keep you grounded and strong. So what is our response here? Our response to this hideout is he conceals us. He hides us from the enemy's eyes. He holds the things that are precious to us and gives us extra portion of grace. He bubble wraps us so that we will be secure under him. Verse 18 says, my foot is slipping. For those of you who are in that situation, go to the hideout which God has given. For those of you whose anxiety is great within yourself, go to the hideout and say, God, I cast it to you. I give it to you. Fear of the future, give it to him. Fear of your job that you might lose it, give it to him. Fear of how the kids would turn out, give it to him. Fear of God, I don't know what's happening within me. Things that are, I'm, I'm struggling within. I need you to pick me up. Go to that hideout. Ask him. Don't look to any social media. Don't look to a human. Because everything is futile. Everything is temporary. Nothing will last. Nothing will protect your spirit, soul, mind, your body. It's only when you find that hideout, you will be protected. He guards you. He guards you. The world outside will break your brokenness even more. Will shame your brokenness. Will ridicule you. But it's in God's hideout that he will shape you. He will hold you dear. He will keep you so that you will not crumble. And the last thing that we read as the psalmist concludes, he who is God is my true shelter. Psalm 94 verses 20 onwards and this is what it says, Can a corrupt throne be allied with you? A throne that brings on misery by its decrease? The wicked band together against the righteous and condemn the innocent to death. But the Lord has become my fortress and my God, the rock in whom I take refuge. He will repay them for their sins and destroy them for their wickedness. The Lord our God will destroy them. I love the last two verses because he concludes saying, Lord, I can rant, but I know you will be my fortress. Take your ranting to God. Take your complaints to God. Take your anxieties and your worries to God. But come out of it knowing that he is your fortress. Come out of it knowing that he is your God. Come out of it knowing he is your true shelter. He is not a temporary shelter, but he is your true shelter. I love when we look at God being our shelter. He allows the light to pass so we can you know, see everything, but he protects us. He protects us from the wind. Yet we feel refreshed with his presence. He gives us, he doesn't allow us to drown. He protects us in that so that our thirst is quenched. We are filled, but we still are held by his hands. So today, whatever is surrounding you, as his children, we don't have to ally ourselves and become corrupt because we are associated with certain people. God wants us to stand apart. As I said in the beginning, the line is drawn. Which camp you're in, you decide. Because if you're in the camp of the evil one, of the enemy, of the wrongdoing, you already see that God, you're contending against God. I would rather be in the side of God 
because I know the end. He brings triumph. He brings victory. And many a times, the victory is not the way I see it. It's the way I need to see it through His eyes. I am personally always worried about this process. I struggle to take refuge under His shelter. I feel like I need to fix it. I I feel like you know I need to have that kit which has my tools so I can go and fix every issue that I have. But I need to learn to abide in His shelter. When we take refuge under His shelter, even when bad things happen, even when things don't work out, even when things look like the enemy is winning. we will see his kingdom here on this earth bring new life um just a couple of weeks back uh, i was with my friend in coimbatore and uh, we had some time before our flight so we took the taxi and we went to this place where i used to go back uh, 23 years back i used to go there and help out and it was a center called michael job center and uh, I still remember as that construction was happening, the person who heads that organization was there, and I was listening to him share the story of how everything came to be. And this is where his son was martyred. He was uh, doing a second year of medicine in Delhi, and Dr. P. P. Job was going to have a convention, a meeting in Delhi. when he got threat saying that you shouldn't have this we will harm you we might even take your life but these people went ahead and um killed the son it was a hit and run case he was walking in campus when a car came ran over him and he died and as much as this entire psalm seems heavy the father was sitting there and he was building a building in remembrance of the child what happened was because of his son's death and because of his blood being spilt on our nation's capital he goes on to stand and say that god gave him a vision to house girls who've lost family due to Uh, ethnic cleansing, or uh, who become orphaned, or uh, parents who given away because they don't want girl kids, and he housed them. And what started as a children's home went on to become a school, went on to become a college, went on to become a, a nursing college, and it all started from that place. And it got me thinking. Even as I was just there a few weeks, and as I was preparing. there was an aspect in which bad things happened to his family i still remember it's very clear in that opening ceremony i was there with him for 2 years every sunday evening i would spend time in that place i interacted with his wife who was a doctor and to see them both come and do what god's called them to do even still in their loss and to see new things being birthed happened because they were residing in the shelter of the almighty it happened because they knew their god will repay for whoever did that god will take care as i said earlier it's not my job to judge but god's job to judge it's my job to be his witness what i saw there was revelation light shining through their lives they could have easily left everything and said you know what we don't need this we don't need this faith we don't need this god only bad has happened to us no but you won't believe in the funeral service as he was conducting for his son he gave a gospel message and he gave an altar call and he told that many came and gave their life to christ the day they were burying his son he never lost sight of what god had called him to do and you might be thinking geshom this is such an extreme case but it shows us 
that if for an extreme case like this he was willing to be under the shelter of god you and i as we face every day ridicule they might challenge us they might look down on us they might disregard us they might laugh and mock us but if there's one thing that we can stand strong is that god you will fight my battle you will do what is needed in my life Warren Wiersbe says this beautiful quote. He says, "If you take care of yourself and walk with integrity, you may be confident that God will deal with those who sin against you. Above all, don't give birth to sin yourself. Rather, pray for those who persecute you. God will one day turn your persecution into praise." A lot of us are spending a lot of time retaliating. A lot of time. we are fighting the mind game in our head oh i should have told this response oh you know what i should repost this so that it shows what i actually feel oh i should share this because if i share this this kind of like talks of what is kind of ministering to me we find ways to justify what we think will be a comeback but if we are quiet god will fight if we are quiet and if we can take shelter god will pay and do what is needed he'll repay he'll take care but when you rest under the shelter when you allow to be under his hideout when he becomes your shield he guards your heart he guards your mind he guards you wholly not partially but wholly So today I want you to come to a place where you're saying my god my god listens to my petitions my god pleads my case my god knows my plans and my god is my safe place my god is my hideout my god is my true shelter if you can come to this place i believe God will be able to fight your battles for you. God will be able to give you a clear perspective. And many a times when his love works in and through you, all you can do is demonstrate his love and be an outworking of his love that's working in and through you. So today, I don't know what you're going through, but I believe I want to pray specifically that as we read this we'll go back to god saying god you do your work i'll do mine which is this waiting which is this residing which is just being still and knowing that you'll fight this for me so today church can i pray with you and can we commit our lives i know many a times we've endured so many hardships but let's remember the life that we're living here is just temporary we are going to spend eternity with him no more sorrow no more pain till that day may we love god wholeheartedly serve him wholeheartedly abide in his shelter wholeheartedly so that we will be able to live the life the abundant life that he's called us to live here on this earth live it to the fullest knowing that he will fight my battles Can we pray, loving Heavenly Father, Lord? We thank you, Lord, for this time. Lord, I pray even right now over your children, Lord, that we will experience your hand over us. I pray, Lord, we will come with our questions to you. We will come with our worries to you. We will come with our grievances to you, Lord Jesus. We will look to you, Lord. Plead our case, Lord. Stand in the gap, Lord Jesus. We want to be on your camp. We want you to be the one who's fighting our battles. We want to stand still and give glory. We want to raise up a praise so that we can see you go ahead of us. I pray that Lord, we will take everything that we are going through, our hardships, everything in prayer to you. We won't take it to a friend. We won't take it to a loved one. We will take it to you first. I pray we won't take it to social media. We will take it to you. We thank you. I thank you for all that you're doing, Lord Jesus. I thank you for your strength. I thank you, Lord, for your grace that you've given upon your children. 
And even right now, I pray for those who have been battling this alone, who have been unable to see you come through. May your hand be upon them. May your strength be upon them. May your grace be upon them right now. I pray that, Lord, we'll all be comfortable living under your shadow, living in your shelter, living in... May you discipline us, Lord, in Jesus, in that safe place. May we find true shelter. And may we thrive in that, Lord Jesus, we thank you. I pray may a blood covering be upon your children, Lord. No dart of the enemy, no lie of the enemy will take fruit, but your promises will prevail, Lord Jesus. We thank you. I pray for strength. I pray especially for peace over families right now, for individuals right now, over their minds and over their heart. I pray for every kind of disturbances to be completely gone. I pray, Lord, especially for those who are confused right now, they have clarity of thought, clarity of mind. I pray for those who are driving right now, who are questioning themselves. I pray as they read the psalm and meditate on it, they will come back knowing that God is for them. I pray that they will be witnesses to the miracles that you're going to do, witnesses to the breakthroughs that they're going to see, witnesses to the life-changing events that they will see because they have trusted you and allowed you to work, Lord. We thank you. I pray, Lord, that you would go before us and strengthen us. In your most holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. So church, even as you step out, step out knowing that God is for you. Step out knowing that God is with you. And step out knowing that you can thrive under the shelter of the God. That you can thrive under the shelter of the Almighty. That He wants you to find Him as a safe place so that the disciplining that he does, you can change and you can come out victorious. That you can hide out so that you're not giving in to whatever's happening outside. The outside climatic conditions don't affect you. You find him and you can thrive where God keeps you. I pray especially that he will strengthen you, he'll give you clarity. For those of you who have been who are stepping into a busy week, that he will give you wisdom, insight, Ask the Holy Spirit to come. For those of you who've questioned God time and again because of bad things happening, would you go back to the cross and say, God, I want you to be my God, to be my Savior. I would urge you if you can also spend some time saying, God, I've had these questions, but I'm sorry that I didn't bring it to you, but I want to bring it to you today. Take some time. I believe God will minister. I pray that you have a blessed week. I pray for God's blessing and anointing and His love and favor to be upon you. God bless you all and have a blessed week ahead. We hope you enjoyed today's message and were blessed. If you liked what you heard and want to hear more messages from us, you could rate us and subscribe to our podcast channel. For more content from We Are Zion or if you would like to get in touch with us, you can go to wearezion.in or follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. Most importantly, remember that whoever finds Jesus finds life. God bless you.